important for us to remember, and I'm sure that Peter would expand on a whole series of other things. One is the wonderful and, uh, and really very precise relationship of uh, Plechnik to the question of, uh, of history and the way in which he really thinks about history in terms of what remains of, of history, the presentness of, of history, uh, in terms of its temporality, in terms of its presentness. And in that sense, avoiding a great deal of the kind of pitfalls uh, of historicism, regionalism, and so on. And of course, the other thing which is really important for us in terms of the exhibition is the relationship to urbanism, the relationship to the city, and the idea of the, the dynamic um, uh, tension, in a sense, between urbanism and landscape, which is a very important and interesting topic uh, for us uh, here uh, tonight. I said also in uh, the gallery that uh, uh, on uh, the original invitation cards, uh, we were supposed to have uh, Boris Podreka, who unfortunately, because of uh, uh, an operation, is not able to be here, but very fortunately we have Peter Krecek, who is really one of the world authorities on the work of Plechnik, professor of art history at the university and the director of the Museum of Architecture. And someone who's written extensively on the work of Plechnik to give the lecture tonight. Would you please welcome Peter Krecek. Thank you, thank you very much. I'm, I'll be talking about Plechnik's Ljubljana. Very few artists are given the chance to design large city areas, let alone an entire city. Plechnik was lucky enough to have this opportunity. Though if we look more closely at how he came to acquire commissions, such as laying out the streets, squares, and parks, in addition to other individual architectural projects. We see that he himself knew how to find the opportunities and the, uh, at the same time prove himself to be the person most competent to tackle them. Through his suggestions and later through the realization of certain plans for individual areas in the city, particularly in early projects, he won the trust of the city authorities. Later, he came up with increasingly daring proposals, as uh, evidenced by numerous plans, many of which he could not have expected to be realized. For the more realistic of them, after his initial successful and well-received projects, commissions came thick and fast. All of his happened uh, over a period which in town building terms was no more than a fleeting moment in the history of the city. Between 1926, when he received his first commission to design public areas of the city and the beginning of the Second World War in Slovenia started in 1941, leaving aside the fact that the, the Plitschik's markets and the uh, Sluice Gate on Ljubljanica River were only finished during the war. Plechnik left such a powerful mark on, Ljubljana's, on Ljubljana with his high quality buildings and arrangements of public spaces that today's city bears with his justification the name Plechnik's Ljubljana. Architectural criticism, and here I have to mention Boris Podreka who is missing today, he said, uh, 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 he said that um, the criticism recognized in these achievements so much inventiveness, artistic originality, and personal stylistic contribution that it sees the whole city as being marked with the artistic stamp of one master, a city signed by the artist. Please, can you turn off the light, please? Bef uh, you can see now two slides. On, the, on your uh, left, this is the actual map of Ljubljana, the, the city, the, the, the homeland, the, the, the place where he was, Plechik was born. And here, Plechik is a young man. He was 24 when he entered the school of Otto Wagner in Vienna. 
Before he reached the artistic and personal maturity necessary to design a city, Lichik underwent a long and at times difficult apprenticeship. It was while studying in Vienna, it was probably about uh, 1894, just before he entered uh, the Wagner studio and the school as well. While attending Otto Wagner's architecture department at the Academy of Fine Arts, he helped draw up the plans for Vienna, street railway, and the regulation of the Danube Canal in Wagner's studio. There he learned the basic of the engineering and design aspects of such work right up to the importance of designing street fittings. During his famous travels around Italy and France, it happened in 1898 and 1899, this is just 100 years ago, he was able to compare the way in which history had responded to these themes, as well as being enthusiastic about historical architecture. Plichik was interested in a great many small practical and anonymous design solutions, particularly in Italian cities stone pavements, curbs, pillars, and posts, fountains, benches, street lights, railings, and such like. Even more, even more important, while traveling around Italy, Plinczyk experienced a profound mental and aesthetic transformation. Most decisive of all was his realization at the time that Ljubljana was his true artistic homeland. During his travels, it was the city of Mediterranean character that revealed itself to him most strongly, and he resolved to dedicate his manifold artistic powers to it. Even from Italy, there flew via his letters home countless expressions of devotion and even direct proposal for the city regulation and beautification. No wonder then that when stopping in Ljubljana on his way back to Vienna after his Italian journey, he should have promptly made two sketches for the remodeling of the area around the Church of St. Peter's in Ljubljana. It was in June 19, 1899. In later years, too, he took a lively interest in Ljubljana issues. While working at the Prague, at, at the Prague Arts and Crafts School, it was in between 1911 to 1921, Plechik included in his school programs a number of projects conceived for real locations in Prague, a bridge across the Vltava River with a new building for the National Museum in Malastrana, a fine art pavilion, a church in Vinogradi, and so on. In terms of teaching method, this was not anything particularly new. Wagner, too, gave real projects for actual locations to his students. However, this decision can be seen as a, an anticipation <coughs> sorry, of Plitching's desire to approach actual architectural and town planning problems, which during the First World War offered few possibilities of realization. Neither should one overlook in his teaching work the way in which he drew a pupil's attention to smaller architectural projects, such as pavilions, market stores, etc., which fall into the category of small urban features. The invitation in 1920 from the President of Czechoslovak Republic, Tomasz G. Masaryk, to remodel Prague's castle its gardens and country yards was a decisive moment in architect's life. It was a once in life opportunity, once in a lifetime opportunity for a project which he, had, uh, he simply could not turn down. On the other hand, an equally attractive invitation had arrived from the newly founded University of Ljubljana to take up a position as a professor of architecture. Plechik was able to accept both challenges, and for just over a decade, it was from 1920 to 1933, divided his creative energy between Prague and Ljubljana. Thus, his Prague uh, over in 1920 and the beginning of the 1930s 
come into existence at the same time as heat works in Ljubljana. Uh, now we see uh, Lichich when he was about 70 years, so about 50 years later, after his, his uh, completed work in Ljubljana. It was during the Second World War in his Ljubljana's School of Architecture. As a consequence, a number of ideas which were developed in Fort Prague found their parallels in Ljubljana and vice versa. Way of example, when the architect was developing plans for the Church of the Sacred Heart in Vinogradi, one of the variants came to life in the Church of St. Francis in Ljubljana from 25 to, to 30. We will see this, this uh, church a little bit later. The idea to pave Congress Square, here we, are, we have the Congress Square, and I'd like to show you the location where it is. Preaching House is somewhere here. Here is so-called the Tanawa Church, and behind the church there is Preaching House. Here in the heart of the town is the Congress Square, as with the park and the square here, exactly. So we are standing now here in front of this church, and we are looking uh, this um, square with the castle behind. So here on the terrace of this castle hill is uh, Ljubljana's castle. <coughs> the idea to pave the Congress Square with a network of light squares in a dark frame, so you can easily recognize this idea. It was made 1927. Unfortunately, only in concrete gained in subsequent years from 28 to 33 its splendid realization in granite in the third court at Prague's castle. That's it. It is made in granite. In Ljubljana it's made in concrete. The pyramid at foot of Tsoizova Cesta. Now see where Tsoizova Cesta is. Here is the School of Architecture and here runs Tsoizova Street bridge and the St. James Square. And we are now standing here with this Klitschnik pyramid there. At the bottom of the slope, there is a pyramid. This pyramid was made 27 as a monument to a famous donator and researcher. And um, in, at the end of 18, the beginning of 19th century, it was Giga Zeus, And for him, Klitschnik made a monument and he made this pyramid at the bottom of Tsozova Street. And at the same time, he made a parallel, a sister pyramid at the Rompart Garden in Prague's castle. Here, on, on your right side. The dome of St. Nicholas Church, the, the pyramid leading exactly to the doors of St. Guy's Cathedral in, in the third court in Prague's castle. The remodeling of the interior of the Chamber of Trade, Crafts and Industry building in Ljubljana, it was built in, in uh, from 25 to 27, was done in exactly the same spirit as the remodeling and uh, expensive fitting out of the presidential apartments in Prague's castle. A fragment of Prague's castle in Ljubljana, one might say. A number of similar cases could also be mentioned. With his first works in Ljubljana, which began multiplying after the mid-twenties, Plechnik's Ljubljana gradually began to take shape. Plechnik rounded off the initial phase of his reflection on the urban layout of his native city with his first complete town plan for Ljubljana, to which he added a special plan for Bezigrad. This is northern part of the town in, in 28. Let's see these two projects. This is the layout. Uh, it's a little bit turned, so I hope you can easily turn uh, your imagination. You, you can follow this curve of Ljubljana here with the castle, and here this curve is like this. It's just turned in, in right angle. This is his first plan for Ljubljana, and this is for the northern part here. There are some features which are still going along with this idea here. 
is the model for the mobile part. It was made, I repeat, 1928. The second period in the 30s was marked by large-scale regulation of the city according to his plans and through a range of monumental features. This is Vegova Street, the Congress Square, the designing of the courses of Ljubljanica and Gradaščica, the laying out of Tivoli Park, etc. We will see all these things from my slide production. And certainly more, modest projects limited to close special holes give sense to the term Plechings Ljubljana. Before the maturing of the architect's conception of his Ljubljana, a new Athens, he said, a cultural and aesthetically exalted national capital with new palaces, colonnades, parks and monuments, a conception which more than anything else was infused with the national ideology of the Slovene Moderna, as we said. Plechik erected in various locations some of his earlier works, uh, let's say the, the old university building, his own house, the Chamber of Trade, Crafts and Industry, the Church of St. Francis. Before this, I'd like to show you this uh, certain plan. It was recently discovered and it was uh, made exactly when Plechik came to, uh, to Ljubljana from Prague, early 20s. And, and I have to, to, ha to make some comments on this. Uh, here, you can see that Ljubljanica here is entering and here is leaving the town. So all this area that you would cover with, and he would make an alley, a long alley through the town. Later on, he abandoned this idea. It's a, a very, very interesting idea how to call the, the, the river in the town and make uh, a beautiful a beautiful uh, street or alley. This is the Church of St. Francis in Ljubljana. It was built from 25 to 30. The tower was built 31. And mutual insurance company building from 28 to 30. Let's say this. This is close to ra the railway station, the mutual insurance building company, uh, company building. With this, he described in a few strokes, a new standard of quality and a measure of the urban extent of the future Ljubljana. He determined a new standard for the level of execution or realization, a new ethical level of the necessary commitment and at the same time the cultural consciousness needed by everyone dealing with the public matters as, in, as important as a city and its image. So this is the new standard, the new image of the town. Plechik praised Ljubljana chiefly for its predominantly Baroque, more Italian than Northern appearance. His discovery during his travels in Italy of Ljubljana that was also tied to the heritage of the ancient world. In, uh, here in this part of Ljubljana, you can easily recognize an old Roman settlement. It was so-called Emona, Roman Roman first uh, uh, military camp and later on uh, a city. Uh, typical Roman uh, provincial town uh, outside the, the uh, or in, in the in a typical town for Roman Empire made uh, or its Italian borders, out of Italian borders. Um, So Plechik felt this, uh, that Ljubljana is tied to the heritage of ancient world. And the Mediterranean awake, uh, ma awakened him, his caustic nature. In southwest part of Slovenia, it's uh, a land called caste. Uh, a very poor land with few water. And in fact, this is Slovenian Mediterranean part of, uh, of, the, of, the, of the country. Uh, he deliberately declared himself as a man coming from Mediterranean. And it was much in his thoughts while he was in Vienna and Prague. Evidence of his, in his statement, in his uh, letter to his brother André, that he had begun to look at Koch's map. Uh, architect Koch made the first touristic map of Ljubljana. 
maybe this map was made, uh, was made based on, on that first touristic map of the city made in the early decades of this century. And he also saw, or he was looking on Fabiani's regulation. Ljubljana had a big earthquake uh, more than 100 years ago. It was 1895, and the, the great parts of this old part of medieval town were destroyed. Many of the beautiful buildings, many Baroque, interesting buildings were torn down. And Max Fabiani, a famous Viennese professor, and also a man who was born in Slovenia and Karst, made uh, all by himself the first regulation plan for Ljubljana after the earthquake. And also this northern part was one of the central themes of Fabiani's plan. So when Plejic was in Vienna, he was just looking. He said, I'm just uh, touching these two plans. And we know for sure that Plejic was deeply involved in Ljubljana's themes when he was outside his homeland. But the real, but real opportunities only opened themselves to him after he had, he had settled in his native city and taken employment there. When talking to some extent about the psychological circumstances of the creation of Plejic's Ljubljana, we cannot overlook his decision to settle in Ternovo. <coughs> this is Plejic's house in Ternovo. As you see from the environment, this is a very poor part of the town. This is southern part here, half village, half, half town. In effect, in effect, he moved to the edge of the city, to an insignificant suburb of market gardeners and semi-peasants, and from there observed the town and made his way into it. This is a very important thing. He settled here. And he was just among these peasants, uh, farmers, and people half employed in the town, half work uh, on the soil. And this one, and, uh, and he started to walk into the town. On these walks, naturally, he was on foot. Since he had no other means of transport, he did a great deal of thinking and planning on his own in many of his solutions, an important role was, was played by his students who were set the task of tackling individual parts of the town. The degree thesis from the first degree, uh, three degree candidates onwards revealed an unceasing concern of the appearance of the city. His student, Dusan Grabrian, posited a bold theory which seems increasingly plausible the closer we come to understanding Plechik's personality and temperament. That Plechik built his Ljubljana from his modest house in Ternovo. As you see, he, he, he had an old house from his brother, his brother bought a house, and Plechik made a cylinder. A cylinder is in fact at that time a symbolic form. A warning finger, here lives an artist. A campanile, a belfry. Here lives an artist. Uh, where a campanile is, there is a bell. And the uh, artist, we have to ring to the artist. Plechik built his Ljubljana from his modest house in Ternov. This is an idea and an action worth, worthy of special attention. For Plechik, in personal and embracing planning, all embracing planning that involves merely peering down at charts was a completely strange idea for him. For him, it was important to have a story which begins somewhere and ends somewhere. His story needs clear sentences, meaningful words, and even voices. He walks around the town where always more than just walks. He was constantly observing, measuring, and waking up, and mentally de deciding what could be rearranged, raised, to higher level, what would be supporting element of the f future arrangement and what features of lesser importance could be concealed, abandoned, or even pulled down. He stepped out of his house and stood in front of the Nova Church. Now we are looking to the Nova Church. You can see in front of the church the bridge with the pyramids. I, can, I hope you can see this pyramid this is just a part of the pyramid. And here's the part, and here's one, and here's one. And do not overlook the alley standing on the bridge, which is quite 
strange idea. In front of, of it, he constructed a semicircular porphyry pavement. This is this, a kind of starting point. And on the axis arranged the Novo Bridge. You, you can see it from this point. You are now standing here, in just in front of the bridge, here. This bridge was built from 28 to 30 as a widening of the square in front of the church with four pyramids at the corners and with a, an avenue of birches on the bridge itself. He leveled the axis of Emolska. We are standing in the middle of Emolska Street here. He designed the corner of Grizanke. This is a monastery complex with the church of the German chivalric order and the environment of the, the square of French Revolution with a monumental obelisk, a memorial to Illyria and Napoleon. Sorry, this is uh, the other view to the Novo Bridge from the riverside. These are uh, embankments of Gradashica River here. We are standing here and we are looking at the bridge here from the level of the, of the, of the river. And all these both embankments are also designed by him. And here we are in front of the Napoleon Monument. It is very rare monument in Europe dedicated to Napoleon. It is because Nap Napoleon um, army brought to Slovenia the first national schools in the national language. That's why we, we made for him this uh, figure head of Napoleon, and here is the dust of a known French soldier in Dallas. This is the Napoleon in the square of the French Revolution in Ljubljana. He went, it was made 1929. He went further along Vegova Street from the monument to the poet Gregorcic. In fact, he made a small chapel to a poet. On your left side, you will see the, uh, the stairs leading to the terraces of, uh, in front of the National University Library. This monument was made later, a little bit later. It was 1936. Uh, 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 this monument stands at the beginning of the terraces about the remains of the old city wall in front of the National University Library. Then he passed the terraces. This is just uh, the camera sees a little bit left of this entrance to the terraces with uh, some seats in front of the National Library for students to have rest, lunch, or something. Here's the National and University Library, the main entrance, a wonderful building, one of his masterpieces in Ljubljana. In Vienna, he built his famous Zachel House in the very center of Vienna. In Prague, there is the most important thing is, of course, the Prague's castle and the church of the Sacred Heart in Vinogradi, uh, uh, the part of the town in Prague. And in Ljubljana is his the third masterpiece built from 36 to 41. This is National and University Library. If you are interested about this building, we can discuss a little bit. It's also presented at the exhibition over there in the exhibition hall. So in front of the National and University Library, then past the Musical Society, which is specially highlighted by a terrace supporting the busts of musicians on, on high pedestals, like this. This is a terrace. On, on the right is the music school, and here are heads of musicians on, the, on these stands. And, uh, which made this terrace is more interesting with these heads. The um, and at last we come to Congress Square. You already saw this, this my slide at the beginning. The whole line of Emonska Street alongside Krizhenke, along Vigo, we are now in the center of Vigo. This is here in the map. This is the National Library here, and we are standing somewhere here. We are going direct to the heart of the town. It 
So all this line is accompanied by avenues of trees. He designed the Congress Square as a platform laid out in a strict network of square fields with a row of lamps along the middle ending of the dominant feature of the Holy Trinity statue. This is this. Now we are standing in front of the church and we are now looking to the, to the castle. And you see this beautiful arrangement of, of, the, of the Congress Square, <coughs> which is of course now covered with uh, cars. It is a parking place and you cannot see anything of this beautiful realization. And I hope that in, in future Ljubljana's authority will make an effort and uh, redesign this beautiful arrangement in the very heart of the town. In the map, see this square here, as I showed before. He's surrounded nearby Zvezda Park. You can see the situation just before, before the First World War, when he replaced the chestnut trees, which called this green area, Here on the left, on your slide, you can see this uh, when these plane trees were very, very small and young. From here, he intended to proceed beyond this park. He would make Propylaea, uh, the monument uh, to King Alexander of Yugoslavia, who was killed in Marseille in 1934. And he would create so-called Southern Square as a, as, as a continuation of this axis coming from his home, uh, home house. From his house, this would be the end of this so-called land axis. This would be the end. He did not, however, succeed in realizing this part of the plan. Nevertheless, by designing s staircases and crossing points such as Gerber steps, 32, this is the way coming from the Congress place here to Ljubljanica River down. And the theater steps, this is the year later with this light in the middle, uh, in the corridor, in between the, the theater. See the detail, like this. 33. He managed to connect the Congress Square with the Ljubljanica in a successful and refined manner. Please do remember this, this form. I, I think you won't forget it. The Ljubljanica was his second longitudinal city axis, or water axis, <coughs> uh, metaphorically speaking, a parallel to his land axis. Well, this my point of the not does not work. So, this is his land axis finishing here, so southern square, and Ljubljanica is his parallel, in quotation mark. The river runs from Spitza. This is the place they are left. Ljubljanica splits into Ljubljanica River. We are looking from, from Prule Bridge on Ljubljanica to, uh, to this uh, part when Ljubljanica splits into Grubar's Channel going left and Ljubljanica. From this point, uh, he made, he re, uh, redesigned all these embankments on the left and the right side. We have returned, we returned here on Prule Bridge and we see now his embankments on the left side of the river. And all his way up to here, to the Sluice Gate here, he designed the, the Ljubljanica as an artistic theme. It's very important. Lechik built this axis as a symphony or a beautiful tale. It begins with an overture of a long horizontals. Let's see. So this 
and over to long slowly starting melody we are still here an over to we said the banks and path on the both sides of the, of the river these are accompanied by living borders and avenues on the terraces and embankments the first stop or break is the composition of the, uh, the bridge of Prule. So here we are standing on. On the left side, uh, I cannot show on my slide, Bridge Quad on the left bank with a group of tall poplars. From here, the design of the embankments changes. On the left, magnificent gentle stone steps accompanied by an avenue of weeping willows. So they are on the left domes in Plechink's language. And on the right, steeper steps with, with grassy banks. At the outflow of Gradaschica, the left side of the composition concludes in an elegant curve of steps. Let's see that. This is it. And on the right, with a sloping bank which allows access to the water via a stone supporting wall. It's, you can see just a small corner of this, this, uh, this part of the design. From here, the Luganica flows in a concrete channel, let's say bed, which beyond the transversal break of St. James Bridge, the work of an, the engineer Alois Kral, but nevertheless given an equal weight in the composition, soon rises to the edges of the high walls of the embankment. Plechik inherited the channel from the Vienna architect Alfred Keller, but attempted in various ways to soften the concrete walls with the throats and narrow terraces for flowers, and of course with lines of trees on the embankment where space by the river permitted this, like this. There are small terraces, and the willow trees are giving, so Plechik put a willow tree on the corner of the shoemaker's bridge to give hand to the water, to touch the water with the hand, that in this way, or there. So he got this terrible bed of the architect and he, in various ways, he wanted just to to get contact with, uh, with the river going downstairs. Alongside the given elements, he added his own new elements to the composition. The white shoemaker's bridge, we see them from the distance. This is the closer side to, the, to this bridge. This bridge was made 33, a parapeted platform with freestanding columns, taught by spheres and lamps, and further on, Tromostoy, from 29 to 32, or triple bridge, undoubtedly the pinnacle of the Lublanica composition. On either side of the original stone bridge, Plechink placed footbridges and surrounded the whole structure with richly sculptured balustrades and placed lampstands on the sculptured bal balusters. The staircases on the footbridges, you can easily recognize these features, which lead to a lower terrace, are re reminiscent of the bridges of Venice. Plechik, in fact, saw the Ljubljana as Ljubljana's gra uh, Canal Grande, a Venetian Canal Grande, that's for him. Just before the Second World War, he began building the monumental feature of the markets you see the line of the markets on your left side. It's, uh, I have to show it. Here is a flower shop <coughs> and the line of the markets. And here on the, le on the left side of the <coughs> river is a small tobacco kiosk. This small tobacco kiosk is a meaningful architecture, a small architecture, but saying to everybody, even so small architecture is worth to be touched by a <coughs> Uh, by a master, by a, uh, an architect. There is no so small task as to be touched by the architect. The composition is typical for hi of him. It begins with a little temple, but this is the flower shop, as I said. 
This is followed by an open foyer on pillars with a balustrade on the riverside and a semicircular balcony which conceals the spiral staircase leading down to the fish market. The court market halls with a colonnade on, on one side and on the riverside a combination of rustic work and smooth walls with windows. This is the side from the, from the pavement, market, and from the riverside. The round staircase leading down to the fish market. So downstairs, rustica, upside, the smooth lines of the wall. <coughs> you can also see these windows, semicircular windows. There are considerably higher structure, which develops along the bend, bend of Ljubljana. In order to provide the necessary views of the river, the architect interrupted it with two open columned lodges. You can see in, in the back one and next the other lodge uh, with the open side to the river. The monumental covered butcher's bridge was supposed to have stood in a gap somewhere halfway along the market hall, but this could not be brought to a realization. I'll show you the plan for one side markets and in the middle a big covered butcher's bridge, not realized unfortunately. The market hall is joined to the dragon bridge by means of a low structure. From here the composition is linked along the both banks as far as to the uh, square of, uh, of, um, of Ambrosch Bridge from where it's uh, just a step past the promenade in Vrast Square to Plechik's true triumphal arch on Ljubljana, the Sluice Gate. This is it. The triumphal arch for the river. This is no other name for this monumental composition of three towers with transverse ties which conceal the wire machinery. This is the final chord, a valediction to Ljubljana River, which, is, which at this point leaves the city. Now we saw Plechik's land axis, the end of his water axis, and what's next. Plechik placed a number, a number of transversal axes on those two main axes. The first is the course of Gladaschica. Just see a short view on the smaller bridge along the Dashica River, which the architect has arranged shortly before tackling the Ljubljana River. It was 30 to 32. The features of symmetrical design of the banks with alley, two bridges, washing places, and a continuation of Iprova Street of the right bank. The second is Troisova Street. We saw already the pyramid. Now the pyramid is in the, in the function, in the composition. This is the slope. And you can see that Plechik introduces with that pyramid the connection, the optical connection with the spire of St. James Church or the river. And thus, with Plechik's arrangement, we see the St. James Square. Now we are turned back and we see the pyramid in the bottom here. Here the pyramid. And further on, the, uh, on with the landscape surroundings of the Church of St. Florence and the Castle Park. These are steps in front of St. Florence Church and the way to the, to the castle. And I have to take this picture because you can hardly find this place without any car. The third, the third transversal axis connects, and this is the, the most important connect the, the line of Tivoli Park, so-called Jakopic Promenade, with its central row of lands to Tromostoje. This is in front of the three bridges, or triple bridge. This uh, meeting point of Plechik's uh, town planning features. And from this, you can easily see the castle at the top of the hill. And now we have his axonometry of his 
new image of the castle. Ricci started with it in early 30s, but he never realized this idea. Ljubljana's castle was supposed to become the main vertical dominant in Plechink's system of the axis. Therefore, Plechink planned for it a new monumental image, but did not succeed in bringing his idea to, to uh, realization. All he did at the castle, he saw in the castle Ljubljana's Acropolis, was to rearrange the walkways and castle entrenchments, 34. Just he made some small interventions in the castle here, but nothing else. But his idea for the castle and the monumental approaches to it continued to trouble him. He worked on it intensively during the war. And after the war, uh, he was unsuccessful with, the, with this proposal to build on the site of the medieval castle a building for the Slovene parliament in the form of octagon. Now you see the octagon replaced, uh, this is, uh, he replaced the octagon, the, the old castle with the octagon, and he planned a monumental staircase leading to the castle. Less emphasized transversal axes are the Roman wall, this one, an old Roman southern wall of Ljubljana, of Old Mona, built in the time when Caesar Augustus died. It was 14 of, this of the first millennium. This is the original level of the wall, marked with small stones. Then he made the, the elevation, two or three meters, and all this Roman wall was covered with grass. Even the pyramid was covered with grass. The idea of the, of the Roman wall was green undulated architecture. I took this idea from Nicholas Pilsner's description of Byzantium. He said with domes of Hagia Sophia, with the dome of Hagia Apostoli, it was golden undulated city. Plinchik transformed this into nearly surrealistic idea of the green undulated wall. You see the pyramid and also you see the lapidarium nearby. And another small axis leading down to the Gerber steps is Shubicheva Street with this quite known Ursuline grammar school in the very center of Ljubljana. If you would like to know where we are, the Roman wall is, th is here, here, sorry, here. And the Ursuline school is just here in the corner, and he leads down to the Gerber steps to Ljubljana River. The basic system, as we have already said, was compressed by Plechik into his first city plan in 28. For the second, 43, he incorporated everything which he had carried out or the, and about that which he had originally conceived and certain new ideas for monumental complexes, complexes such as new town hall in uh, Wodnik Square and an Odeon between con uh, Congress Square and the Bank of Ljubljana. Some of these ideas you can see in the, in the exhibition. I, didn't, uh, I, did, uh, I cannot show by my slides. And new accesses to the castle opposite the cathedral. One of these I have. This is the new plan for the a cylinder with stairs leading direct to the, to the castle head. One of these ideas uh, born in between, in, during the war. This uh, would have required extensive demolition work in the old part, which nearly destroyed the uh, western part of the medieval part, uh, medieval town in Vienna. He was unable to put into effect his town plan for Bezegrad, which was ma made as I said, 28, but he did succeed in realizing several ideas based on it. These include the extension to the old cemetery church of St. Christopher. Uh, I'll, this is his second plan, made 43, including all his real realized things and some things he planned, but he was not able to realize. This is here.
northern part of Ljubljana. Later on, this church, is St. Christopher's, it's an old Baroque church, he added uh, a, a modest extension. This is the new parish church of St. Cyril and Methodius. Later transferred to uh, Vodovodna Street, you can see the situation of the church is exactly as it was, I remember that. But uh, this unity of the old church and the, and the new church is of course is of course disappeared. On the site of the cemetery itself, the monumental cylindrical building of the Baraga Seminary, this was built 37 to 41. You can easily recognize this, this uh, building here, unfinished. The, the war started, the seminary was not finished, and the situation of the seminary is like this. This is the uh, quite recent made photograph. And at the end of Linkartova Street, he conceived on a grand scale an extensive group of chapels of benediction with a monumental portal. This is Jale Cemetery, one of the most important cemeteries in Europe in 20th century. This is the photograph made immediately after the cemetery or the valedictory halls were open. It was 1940. The, uh, the big uh, propylaea entering to the valedictory halls with the chapel. And nowadays, portal to the main chapel of the cemetery, Jale Cemetery. If we said Acropolis for the castle, this is of course Necropolis, the city of death. In western side, here the map left, this is the small church of St. Bartholomew. Lechik made an arrangement all around the church. We can say that this is um, he remodeled the facade and surroundings of the church of St. Bartholomew, this was 36, and outside Ljubljana, through steel and its, uh, in its gravitation area, this is the church of St. Michael's in the Marsh. It was built 36 to 40, a church in the middle of the marsh, with long stairs leading to the church, an idea taken from the National Library along stairs leading to the reading room. This is, in brief, is Plechix Ljubljana, an urban network of longitudinal and transversal axes into which Plechix placed his constructions. The Vigova Street the projects, among others, shows that the architect mark of his area in advance and that sometimes it was only much later than he tackled it in more depth with his buildings and final arrangements. The monument to Illyria and Napoleon, together with the arrangement of the area in front of Križanke, dates from early, as early as 29, in 36, 41, and a nearby plot in which in 1929 he had, he had been temporarily masked, when until he, the earthquake, the Baroque Prince Manor had stood. He erected the National and University Library and through a uh, refined designing of the terraces which stand about the remains of the Renaissance city walls by the, the library, incorporated uh, it into the original plan for, the, for the, this future. As regards the designing of details, one should not overlook the rest of the walls, the profiled concrete frames of the park benches, the pedestals for the monuments to the famous Linguists, linguists, and of course the patches of, of greenery. He did not design the Christian complex until after the war. It was made from 1952 to 1956, when Plichik was an old man. He designed this. A court, an old monastery of German knights, a big court, and there is a fun story. There were Plichik, uh, 
played a little bit with the symbols of hammer and sickle. And of course, he put a, a lot of electricity I in the pavement of this, uh, of this court. And they asked him, Professor, why so much electricity here? Why so much wires here? He said, I am dreaming to gather all the communists of Ljubljana and enlighten them. But Blinching Ljubljana would not have existed if the architect's primary features with a range of ordered motives, narrative features, ranging from great architecture and alterations of varying scale of existing structures to merely newly incorporated elements had not been accompanied by a treatment of details in the form of arranged pavements, curbs, paths, trees, emphasized details, and above all, columns, which create an, an optical rhythm. Plitching's persistent resistance to the idea that the city must primarily be adapted to modern fast traffic and his persistence with the idea of a city for pedestrians. Since only the pedestrian is able to stop at the beautiful detail, it only makes sense to enter the pedestrian into an area by means of vistas. Having today's divided era of late modernism, both gained complete recognition Precisely because of the properties described, critical opinion reveals Plinchik Ljubljana as a unique architectural and town planning phenomenon of the first half of the 20th century. Now, I'd like to mention something. What I learned from a friend of mine, Mel Gooding, who created that exhibition you can see over there. Having in consideration the crucial Plinchik urban elements in the complexes like stairs, bridges, colonnades, we have recently reached the completely new interpretations. In all of my researches being made in the last 10 years, I drew attention on how Plitching endlessly and profoundly manipulated with the traditional architectural elements, especially the columns. In his work, I have never noticed the column which should have properly corresponded to the classical order. They are either too tall or too low or too thin or too thick. They might have emphasis or not, they, and not to say anything about the large range of different capitals, which were all without exception the transformation of all possible historical models. This my statement has been recently exceeded by Mel Gooding, who recognized a certain subversiveness in this Plitching's method of transma uh, transformation. In fact, his transformation destroyed classical order. And the classical order is a symbolic form which was chosen by the state, written with great S, to implement its own political order which should be respected without any objection. Being used as witty, humorous, often with a certain erotic connotation, Plitchik's urban form re-established the democratic space of communication for every citizen, literally for every human being in the street. In this view, as Mel says, Plitchik as architect, town planner, and sculptor, all in one, really brings crucial and universal urban idea for the forthcoming century. Thank you. Uh, I'm sure that there would be uh, a few questions now. Uh, who would like to, uh, to start? Do we have a microphone there? Maybe while uh, people are getting their thoughts together, I could uh, ask you one question about you made a um, very clear reference, of course, to the, to the background of Plechnik and his work in, in other cities, Prague, Vienna, and then uh, finally Ljubljana. I think one of the things that's very uh, in interesting and important in some way is then the influence 
in some way of these other projects, like uh, from Prague Castle, working on the landscape of Prague Castle, then coming to the yes, exactly. and these kinds of sites. Um, it would be great if you could say a few words about this idea of the kind of hybrid situation of the architect, in a sense, the, the, the significance of some of these uh, influences, but also the way in which the city of Ljubljana, it seems to me, then becomes itself a kind of site of migration, because the way that the architect is a kind of migrant figure going from city to city, also somehow then the, the city of Ljubljana uh, begins to have some of the traces of these kinds of travels or these kinds of occasions. Uh, what is the relationship between yes. these, uh, these other places and Ljubljana? Um, there are a few things uh, which uh, should be mentioned in this, in this connection, in this context. One is Plechik himself. He lived three lives. One life, he lived in Vienna. And he was completely dedicated to Vienna and Vienna's problems. The Tsarko House, the Church in, in, of the Holy Spirit in Otakring. And then he made a break. He went to Prague, he, he became a professor, and he started his new life in Prague. In a connection with the President of Republic, and you have to know that Prax Castle was the biggest commission in the time during two wars, maybe with the exception of, of Hitler's Berlin mm -hmm. with Albert Speer. But this was the biggest court in Europe making such an effort. And this effort were underlined by Masaryk himself who said, we are creating the new nation and we have to make the new symbols of the state which people uh, could recognize and follow them. And at the same time, Plitschik was employed by Ljubljana. And he, in Ljubljana, he lived the third life, just one, two, three lives in his long, long life. And when he was in Ljubljana, as I said, in Italy, he discovered Ljubljana as his real, a proper artistic homeland. And Ljubljana, being in the very center of Slovenia, halfway from the Mediterranean to the north. And if you saw the, the town plan of the, the old part of the town, it is more or less of many middle European towns made on German pattern or a nor northern or a Germanic, let's say Germanic, because we are talking about early mid Middle Ages, this is 12th century, let's say, or, or 13th century. This curve of Ljubljana was used for, for a city, for, a, for the, the new structure of the new town. When Italians came to Ljubljana with Renaissance and Baroque, they transformed, they redressed the whole town. The scale or the pattern, the, 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 the basic pattern is medieval, but the new form is Baroque. So Ljubljana is, is it's just in between these two very important and, and powerful uh, streams, northern and southern. In Baroque, we got this southern influence, and Plechik, as a modern architect, he, be, he, he came with a modern idea, a modern decision. I'll give to this city a new Mediterranean form. And he deliberately took the ideas from Venice, even more. Venice is, of course, in the context of his new Athens. Professor Bob Dick from Virginia Tech, maybe somebody, somebody knows him, he said, we, we, uh, when we were, were uh, making our researches on Ljubljana, we, we thought that this idea of Ljubljana as new Athens is a, a nice me metaphor. But Professor Bob Dick, he, he discovered that this was taken very, uh, very serious. In fact, he said, the castle is Acropolis. Charles Cemetery is Necropolis. Plitschik also made theaters. The National and University Library is, of course, the Hellenistic Library. Uh, Plitschik also created a stadium, which was, in that time, the biggest stadium in the Balkans in early 20s. So he literally found new Athens in Ljubljana as the new city, the new capital of culture and spirit. That was Plitschik's idea. I hope I, uh, uh, I used too much, 
too much time and too much words for this, but I hope that you understand this, this context. Maybe we, we just say something about this Prague and Ljubljana. Some uh, Pliczik got so-called the Garden of Eden. This is just in, just down when, uh, just uh, in uh, at the bottom. Uh, if President Masaryk can see down, he can see just this Garden of Eden with a male symbol, a big vase, 60 tons, monolith vase, and a, and a obelisk, a monument to the leg uh, legioners of the First World War, as a men's symbol, Adam and Eve in a Garden of Paradise. Then it's a long park on the southern walls of Prague's castle. This is the Rompert Garden. Plinczyk started with this idea how to lead a pedestrian from motive to motive, from small um, small pavilion to pyramid to another monument. And this is 80 meters long from Garden. And this idea, I think, he brought to Ljubljana. And he started not in the Garden of Eden, but his own house. And he went directly to the city, and whatever he met on his way, he tried to raise on a higher cultural level. This very unique, for my opinion, method of town planning, how to create from very modern things. In Prague's castle, it, it was a very rich commission. You can choose granite, you can choose marbles, you can choose good uh, or excellent uh, sorts of wood or metal. Everything was possible. When the first monolith was broken, Masaryk paid the second one from his own pocket to calm down the press because it was a big, a big scandal, of course, of this, of this very expensive monolith about 20 or 24 meters high, broken. An enormous, uh, enormous damage was made in that time. It was perfectly described by a Czech uh, critic who, who described this perfect situation in Prague. He said, in the town, that means in Prague's town, there is industry, there is traffic, there is uh, calculation, is a concrete, is hurry. Everything is downstairs, everything is busy, everything is building, everything is in action. In Prague's castle, the time stops. There, you can see old masters with, uh, with, uh, uh, with stonework. Everything stopped there. And Janak asked himself, is it possible that an architect can took this, this uh, opportunity in this way and stop the time and say, here will be different. We are making the new symbols for the next millennium, let's say. That's why he used pyramid, a symbol of eternity, let's say. Or granite, everything is eternal there. It was, it was a big difference and, of course, a big exception. And Yannick said, is it possible to be <coughs> this way? And he said, it is the fact, it is so. And he said, Plegic was a big ex uh, exception. Can we bear, can we stand with a big exception in this century? And I say, my answer is, modernism provides also a big exception. Modernism is not only a style, it's not only a faith, it is also a position. I can choose. This is very special for modern. You can follow this to the, the beginning of 18th century, not only 20th century, it's also 18th century. When you are in the position to choose Romanesque or Gothic, modern or historical, or re, uh, reinterpretation of historicism, we are already in modernism. Any yes, over there. Maybe you can uh, wait for the microphone. Joel, do you think you could get a mic here? <coughs> Is there a mic here? Just here. Thank you. 
Um, I'm interested in. Uh, See if it's switched on, please. I'm moving to the. Hello. Yes, that's right. I'm interested in knowing um, why you think Plechnik chose to create this path, which departs from his house, because I noticed from the description that there are many important things around there, the Roman walls and so on. So there is some kind of historical significance why he chose that point, or do you think that by choosing a personal path or his path from his house <coughs> to the center of the city and so on, he was trying to establish um, the significance of the role of the artist in um, making an incision in the city? Or what is, I mean, why do you think he chose to do that? It is, as you say, a very particular way of approaching yes. urbanism. As I said, uh, he was an exceptional personality. His, uh, we can also recognize this uh, decision from his psychological uh, position. Uh, in Prague's castle, he was, uh, he was in a position to start here with the Garden of Eden because it was important for the president. The president said this part of the castle should be uh, renovated because I need it for my, my presidential uh, use. And that's why Prichin was forced to start there. In Ljubljana, he was not forced. He was just, he just came and he decided to go outside the town. Professors of the new founded in Ljubljana's university went close to the Roman wall and they built these villas all around there. Prichin was in the same position to buy a piece of land and build a house there. But he didn't want to do that. In fact, he, he was not very satisfied with the, this, the, this decision of professors. He said, in my position, I would put police to protect that wall and stand there and to, to protect this, the whole area from the builders. This was his position, his, his respect to the Roman wall. He was very interested in that wall that it is there, that he can find, he can touch the roots of ancient world here in this, in this town. And we have, at the same time, or nearly at the same time, a very similar position to another one, a writer, whose name is Ivan Zanka, who also came from Vienna. He lived in Otakring, in work, working uh, worker suburb, and he went to Ljubljana, and he didn't settle in the center of the town. He went to Rožnik here. So it is even more, uh, more distant location. And I see that this is the common feature for this great personality of the, uh, which were formated at the beginning of the century. We call all this movement in our country, this is Slovenian Moderna, included writers, poets, painters, and architects. Fabiani and Plecic are of this kind. And as Tsankar and Plechi, they went outside the town to observe, to be distant, and be inside as well. And this way, from his home to the center of the town, this was the way, uh, uh, I, I, I'm happy you asked me, uh, Plechi's sister lived in uh, very close to Ljubljana's cathedral. And as he was single, he was not married, he went every, every week or every day maybe to his sister in the center of the town. So he was forced to do this way. And this was of course a support. When you get an inspiration going along the river or he got an inspiration how to rebuild the town. And he got immediately a possibility to do that. In that time, there was very few bureaucrats in the town. There were just three people who built the town. One was a conservator a professor of art history, Frances Tele, who, who said, this is important, this is not important, you can use it, you, you can't use it. Second one was Matko Preloše, who was the director of the department of, uh, of uh, the building department of the city hall, and the third was Fletchy. This was a joke in Ljubljana at that time, but it is true. These three men built Ljubljana in about 15 years, from 26, let's say, up to 41. Uh, no, I think that <laughs> London needs <laughs> at least nine. Oh, okay. Thank you, Peter. May I just uh, once again thank His Excellency uh, Marian uh, Sjetnik, uh, the uh, ambassador of Slovenia, for uh, making the exhibition and uh, the lecture.
possible. And also, uh, obviously, I'd like to extend a welcome to uh, his guests, the ambassador from Albania and from uh, Slovakia, and uh, hope that uh, we will continue to uh, develop this uh, connection with Ljubljana and learn something also in terms of uh, the question of the mayor and what happens to London and all these paths along the Thames that could happen, things like that. Anyway, thank you very much. Thank you, Peter.